Ancient Egypt, the Middle and New Kingdoms. The Middle Kingdom was a period of order and stability. The New Kingdom was a period of new art, new temples, and military conquests. Trade routes are paths followed by merchants. Queen Hatshepsut was a woman that ruled as a man. Ramses the Great was a conqueror of the New Kingdom. Tribute is payment from conquered kingdoms to their conquerors. Hieroglyphics were Egyptian picture writing. Papyrus was a plant that was made into a paper-like substance. The Rosetta Stone was an artifact that allowed modern scholars to first read Egyptian hieroglyphs. Sphinxes were mythical creatures with the bodies of lions and the heads of humans. An obelisk is a tall tapered stone monument. Tutankhamun was the boy king, the only pharaoh's tomb not robbed before modern scholars opened it. All right, Middle Kingdom and the Hyksos. After a while, the old kingdom fell apart and Egypt became four or more kingdoms. Around 2050 BC, Egypt was once again unified. The Middle Kingdom had begun. The Middle Kingdom ended when the Lower Egypt was invaded by the Hyksos. The Hyksos uses chariots to defeat the Egyptians. They were a Semitic people like the Arabs and Jews. They practiced horse burials and worshipped a storm god. They ruled Lower Egypt from the end of the Middle Kingdom until they were thrown out at the beginning of the New Kingdom. The Egypt Once the Egyptians overthrew the Hyksos, they wanted to be safe from another invasion. And so, to keep themselves safe, they conquered their neighbors. Queen Hatshepsut was ancient Egypt's most famous female pharaoh. She ruled for 21 years and was one of the most powerful female monarchs of the ancient world. Egyptologists think they have identity, identified with certainty the mummy of Hatshepsut found in a humble tomb in the Valley of the Kings. The tomb of Hatshepsut is considered the most important find since the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. Ramses the Great Ramses the Great became a pharaoh as a teenager and ruled for 66 years. Ramses led successful military campaigns against Egypt's enemies both north and south. Perhaps the greatest battle Ramses fought was against the Hittites. It is probably the largest chariot battle ever fought. And it's the earliest battle for which the details of tactics and formations are known. Spies of the Hittites told Ramses that the Hittite camp was far away. It wasn't. Hittite chariots crossed the river and attacked a raw division. The raw division was surprised and dispersed. The Hittite force then turned to attack the main Egyptian camp where Amun division was. But Ramses led his chariots to assault the Egyptian camp and the Hittites fled with heavy losses. The lighter, faster two-man Egyptian chariots were able to pursue and take down the slower three-man Hittite chariots from behind. The Hittites uh, gathered together a sortie to aid their retreating forces. And by that time, Ptah Division was closing in on the battlefield. After, so after blundering into a devastating Hittite chariot ambush, the young king was still able to rally his scattered troops and fight on, 
all the while escaping death or capture. After the Battle of Kadesh, Egypt and the Hittites agreed they would not challenge the boundaries between them. The Kadesh Peace Agreement is believed to be the earliest example of any written international agreement of any kind. Ramses the Great was also known for his great building projects. This temple was called the Ramesseum. Artist recreation there. Another important building project was the tomb of his wife, Nefertari. It's famous for the beautiful murals painted inside. Ramses the Great lived to an age of 91. His mummy is on display in Cairo, Egypt. King Tutankhamun, sometimes called King Tut. King Tutankhamun came to the throne while still young. His father had been a radical and had possibly been murdered. His father, Akhenaten, had something wrong with him. When he was young, he looked normal enough, but as he grew older, his face and body showed a type of malformation. Scholars are uncertain what it really was. Akhenaten closed all the temples of the gods in Egypt except one, Ra, the sun god. Monotheism, or the worship of one god, is almost unknown in the ancient world. Naturally, some of the priests were not happy about this. Some people wonder if this had anything to do with not only his death, but his son's early death. For many years, historians debated what killed King Tut, with everything from illness to murder had been suggested. While the idea of assassination sounds exciting, recent CT scans revealed that the pharaoh suffered massive physical trauma prior to his death, possibly in a fall from his chariot or as the result of a hunting accident. Tut was known to be an avid hippopotamus hunter, and the damage to his chest and ribs could have been caused by a hippopotamus bite. However, no one really knows how Tutankhamun died. Before finding Tut's tomb, every Egyptian tomb discovered by archaeologists had been robbed by tomb raiders. When archaeologists discovered King Tut's tomb, however, they were overjoyed to find the door still sealed. Inside were more treasures than any archaeologists had ever seen. The Rosetta Stone. Another great discovery in Egypt was the Rosetta Stone. For many years, no one could read ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. The stone, however, had the same text written in Egyptian hieroglyphs and two other languages, and one of them was Greek. Since scholars knew Greek, they could finally figure out how to read hieroglyphs. Today, when people have a key to understanding something, they often say it's their Rosetta Stone. Try to write your own name in hieroglyphics. Pause here. The obelisk. An obelisk is a tall, tapered stone monument. Uh, these were started by the Egyptians, but uh, are used in many places, locally in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, and in Washington, D.C. We have them as well as in the Washington Monument. 